In the misty light of a dawning day, a beauty sleeps by the sea. Of all the cities in the West, the most beautiful one is she. I love her in all her changing moods. When she smiles on a sunny day. And I love her when her face is veiled with fog hanging over the bay. There she is, my city, San Francisco. A city built on hills like Rome. Downtown, tall office buildings. Glued to the slopes of Telegraph Hill, small homes. A little distant Russian hill. Most San Franciscans have one thing in common. Whether they live in a fancy villa in the marina or a modest residence on Potrero Hill, they have a view. Old homes and new homes. And all the streets seem to lead up to somewhere. Up, up, up. Perhaps it was the fog that made the early explorers miss the narrow entrance to the bay for two centuries. When they discovered it at last, it was the year of independence, 1776. 
But here at the Presidio of San Francisco, they raised the royal Spanish flag and claimed the territory for the King of Spain. This lasted less than 50 years and then came ruled by Mexico and finally in 1846, the Stars and Stripes. Not much is left of San Francisco's early days. An old adobe wall, Dolores Mission. More recent history links the city with the saga of the West. The sawmill of the immigrant from Switzerland that never cut a foot of lumber, yet produced some of the greatest fortunes known to man. The river, quiet now, but once the goal of thousands who starved and suffered thirst and fought their way through mountain passes, and those who trekked across on horse or foot by way of Panama, or came in ships around Cape Horn and hurried through the growing village by the bay to get rich quick. A pile of rocks remembers Sutter's name, a statue on a hill, his partner who first saw the gold, and both died poor. The gold gave out, the fortune seekers moved to higher ground, stamping mills appeared in the Sierra, they struck it rich in the Comstock. Mining shares skyrocketed in San Francisco. Virginia City swarmed with bankers, gamblers, speculators, French cooks and Chinamen and pretty ladies, and miners from Cornwall, Slavonia and Saxony. They dug deep into Mount Davidson and Gold Hill. They drilled a five-mile tunnel through the mountains to drain the water. Hundreds of millions worth of silver and gold from the hills. Everybody had money and wanted some fun. Fortunes were made and gambled away in a night. Now, all is still. All but forgotten are the places where these men lived and worked and sometimes went to church. Where many of them rest. But with their daring toil, up in these hills and in the river valleys, they helped to shape one gleaming pearl. This is a city of many tongues. They get along together and some of them live in their old accustomed ways. Take Little Italy.
Yes, San Francisco. Perhaps you remember the joyous anticipation of a pleasant voyage abroad. Or the day you came home. Now hear this. The ship is now approaching the Golden Gate Bridge on entrance to San Francisco Bay. there is more. Through its great harbors flows the life stream of a nation, its trade. Look down the waterfront, listen to its pulse, the creaking of winches, the screeching of pulleys and tackles, the aching groaning of straining ropes. Watch the ships from many lands and our own, ships arriving heavy with foreign cargo, and others taking our export goods abroad. Modern grain lifts speedily pour truckload after truckload of wheat and barley into the holds of waiting freighters for shipment to Japan. Huge suction tubes dip into the copra ships just in from Samoa and the Philippines, pumping the coconut meat into the oil pressing plants on shore. Ceaselessly moves the two-way traffic of goods. Refrigeration boats unload bananas wrapped in cellophane from Panama and Costa Rica. Bales of crude rubber in transit here are loaded for Australia. We buy your frozen fish. We sell you our beef. Some cargoes are tough. And tough men handle them. Bamboo from Indochina to make furniture. Industrial machine parts to Malaya. From Western Europe, products of their automotive industry. American petroleum goods to Thailand and Ceylon. Cinnamon and other spices come from Southeast Asia. They are inspected by government agents for quality and purity. Rolls of precious silk from India are checked and weighed and cleared through customs. Chinese tea is checked and tested by health inspectors. Coffee imported from Guatemala, Costa Rica, Brazil and many other countries is sampled at the docks by agents of the big coffee merchants. Coffee is big business. This country buys more than any nation in the world. In their downtown offices, the coffee importers are at work. Roast the new samples, smell of it, taste it. Sell it fast. I have just... Where there is a great port, there is also shipbuilding and repair work always going on. There are five big navy yards. Ships must be overhauled and modernized. New equipment is lifted by giant cranes. Fresh food supplies are put on board for the next voyage. New men for another tour of duty. Add to this the industrial plants all around the bay, the muscle of modern life, the oil refineries, the sugar mills, makers of electronic equipment, the tool of modern science, the hot, noisy, busy steel mills whose output helps to fill the nation's ever-growing needs. Everywhere around the bay, wheels are humming, 
turning, spinning. This is modern San Francisco, a center of industry and finance. A little more than a hundred years ago, a tiny village. Today, they call her ruler of the West. Yuan Dan, the Chinese New Year, usually comes early in February. The Chinese still reckon time by the lunar calendar. On Grant Avenue, Chinese delicacies are displayed in the open for sale. Salted duck eggs and Chinese lily roots. Sigu, a potato type root. Sea cucumbers and oysters soaked in water. The storekeepers hang strings with dollar bills attached above the doors of their shops for the day of the lion's dance. Peach blossoms, symbol of longevity, bring a high price. All food is carefully hand-picked by the Chinese housewives for the holiday feast. New Year's dinner is an elaborate affair consisting of many dishes. Here Mrs. Tung prepares the main dish, chow kai gao, or fried chicken bowl made with bamboo shoots, black mushrooms, snow peas, and water chestnut. Her small daughter Carolyn prepares ji bao gai, finely shredded bone chicken marinated with spices, each morsel wrapped in special paper, and fried in peanut oil. The time has come to go to Chinatown. Carolyn and Gregory are going to wear traditional clothes made by their mother from imported Chinese silk. In Chinatown's joss houses, there's the sound of cymbals and gongs and the heavy odor of incense. This is the time for ancestral worship. Offerings are made of sacrificial food and special candles are lit. At New Year's time, the Chinese try to attract the benevolent spirits of their ancestors. And to chase away the spirits of evil. Through the narrow streets of Chinatown dance the lions, braving firecrackers thrown at their feet, jumping and bowing along to the accompaniment of cymbals, drums and gongs. The Chinese are a practical people. At New Year's time, they're supposed to perform good deeds. And so a noisy tradition is combined with a collection of money for charity. Tirelessly, the lions dance, writhing back and forth from store to store, from house to house. At each place they are greeted by firecrackers, perform. The strings of dollar bills are hauled down and more firecrackers are flung at their feet as they move on. Parade officials carefully write down each contribution. 
Some stores have set up bowls of water containing coins, which the lion dancers must retrieve without using their hands, and fruit and lettuce. If the lions take these offerings, it will bring good health. Often a dancer representing the shopkeeper adds to the spectacle by pretending to ward off the brave lions. parade has wound its way through the streets. At last they have arrived at the final stop, the house of one of the benevolent societies, where high up on a balcony, an extra large amount of money is displayed. Now two lions move slowly forward to the beat of the gong, rhythmically nodding their heads, shaking their bodies. Prancing about, they approach each other, pretending to fight between themselves for the honor of receiving the reward. Down comes the money, and a final long salvo of firecrackers concludes the lion's dance.
Santa Fe Tagano calling this factory. Good morning, Pete. Point loaded. Tell me what the weather is when you get out toward the bridge. Okay. Well, that clear around right here, but I'll be on the bridge to see some falls rolling in.